Hi everyone, for this video I'll take you through how I achieve my Nebula and Planets theme for my Eldar vehicles. I hope you're sitting comfortably as it's going to be a fairly long video. But if you like what you see, like and subscribe as hopefully I'll be posting more videos of projects in the future. Enjoy! Hello, I've had a few people ask me how I uh, do the galaxy effect on my Eldar tanks, well, in vehicles. Like uh, this, this is my Cobra recently finished. Planets on and everything. So yeah, I thought I'd uh, show you how I do it. It took me a while to, I, could, I struggled to find a video how I do it on like YouTube or anything. I, so I ended up finding videos of people doing uh, like nebula effects with the uh, spray can art and things like that on, on, on canvas and so I just applied that to models and and some guy had done something similar in a white dwarf and so I, I read the article and pieced it together and there we go. So yeah, so my, my next project is going to be a Crimson Hunter. So. I thought I'd uh, do a stage by stage video and show you how I do it. So it should look something similar to my hemlock when it's done. Too pleased with how that turned out. This was originally painted a different scheme. And then uh, I thought I'd manage to go over and it's, it's okay, it doesn't, I can't really tell. So I'm pretty pleased about that. So yeah. The first thing I did was assemble it. I magnetized this one so I can change the weapons. Um, sprayed it with the Chaos Black undercoat face, face spray, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, go over with <coughs> just with my airbrush. I've just gone over it once with, um, what's it called? Just a black paint basically. You can use that Abaddon Black if you want or whatever really, just so it's all nice and uniform. And if you have to go back, in with black it'll match in nicely right so now that's done we need to start putting down oh yeah I should say the I leave the um, windscreens out until uh, well I do them afterwards because it's uh, I do like a little moon effect on them and if you put them in you have to mask off and it's just a pain so do them separately Right, so yeah, so first you spray the nebula pattern down, so you get, you just need to do that with white, white paint. So I'll get me a brush, get it going. So I've got some uh, Vallejo, this is just the Mecca colour, but it doesn't matter which one, as long as it's uh, a white paint, pure white. <clears throat> so this is what I do when I'm airbrushing the um, I learnt a lot from uh, next level painting on YouTube because when I first had an airbrush I used to struggle a lot with clogging and things like that and consistency of the paint, like even of the paints that are designed for an airbrush, it'll still clog. So if you put some of that, you can you can use any paint with that, you can use, you could use white scar which is dead clumpy, not white scar, well white scar does it as well, the, the Citadel one. Flow and prove it, it's amazing. I swear by it. So, put a few blobs of this in. I don't know about that, maybe seven or eight. And some white in. Mix that in and see what that's like. Should be all right. You want it about a bit thicker than milk, really. <clears throat> if any of you haven't tried an airbrush, I, I recommend you do. It, it, you just need to get a cheap one and try it at first because it's, it's a brilliant tool. It really is, especially for vehicles and things like that. It just helps speed it up. Base coating with the brush is no fun whatsoever. Right, so I just get the 
vehicle and then I'd start whacking down some almost like lightning really in a, in a, in a random pattern and it looks it looks rubbish at first but it comes together so I usually where do I start I'll probably start around around here at the front You just want to keep going like random as random as you can and then just keep going off in little uh, little forks in different directions in random spots and down there maybe and then um, once you've done that you select little spots along these and just put a bit more white paint and turn them into a bit of a, a, a like a blob just work it around like that I don't know if you can see very well there. Like so. You just have to be careful when you're putting down the uh, the blobby bits. It pulls slightly, so if you do, if you keep going too much, it'll start to like like I don't know, like spider out, like it looks, looks like liquid. And it makes a bit of a mess, so you have to uh, wait for it dry, and then I usually make the blob even bigger then and try and mask it. That's how you learn, though, isn't it? Make mistakes. kind of thing so yeah we just uh, I'll just do the top for now I, I, I sometimes I do the bottom as well on the on the jets with them being quite high models but uh, I can come back and do that at a later stage I'll just uh, do the top for this video I think right before I move on to the next stage I forgot about something the uh, I needed to mask off for the eclipse effects uh, the effect, so which is like that. That needs uh, masking off before you spray the white down. So what I've done is I've sprayed a patch where I'm going to put one. I'm spread it black again. So I'm going to put one there. 
So what I do is I use I use it. You can use masking tape if you want. But I, 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 I use that on when I first tried. It doesn't work the best to be honest. <clears throat> this stuff's much better. It's from like a hobby store. It comes on a big roll, a big long roll. It's like a sticky, clear plastic. I, I don't know what it's called to be honest. And um, I can't for, for the life of me find the rest of it. I can only find this off cut, but it'll do. It'll do for us. So I just use, you just need something round really to make little things like that. That'll mask off like and look like an eclipse. So what, you, what I'm supposed to do is put that on before I even spray it. So I'll stick that down there now and then leave that on until I've finished. Well, you'll see what I do later on. Well, to do that, I just get like some old coins. These are just euros or whatever's left over from holiday. And then just find a piece and cut around it really. Okay, doke for the next stage, it's time to colour in all that white. Now for the my previous two, I did, um, I did them half and half, like purple and blue, and then I mirrored them so they look good when they when I'm running two of them. They sort of mirror each other, whichever side they were on. And that was quite cool. And the colours I used were. I think that's Vallejo game colour. It's uh, hexed lichen, warlord purple. So that's the purpley side. I do a little bit of purple and then a little bit of the more pinky colour. And then the blue side. I pretty much exclusively use that, which is turquoise by Vallejo Mecha colour. But on those two, I didn't have that one at the time. So I think I used, if I remember rightly, Thousand Suns blue. I think I slightly prefer the colour of Thousand Suns Blue, so I might mix them two in patches, not together, but on, on the model. Okey doke. Alright, let's do that then. Oh yeah, I put my um, clips thing on, ready for later, so I just leave that on there now. So same as always, flow improver. Okay. A little bit more, and then we'll go. Then we'll go purple first. Why not? This is quite a thick paint because it's not meant for airbrush, so you don't need too many. We'll see how that goes. For mixing that, I just uh, instead of getting a brush in there. I just put my finger on the tip and then slowly rock the trigger back and it pushes the air into the cup and mixes it for you. As you can see, I hope. That's that. A bit thick. Maybe a bit thick, but put a little bit more flow improvement. You have to be careful with these bottles. They're almost exactly the same. One's cleaner and one's flow improver, so have to be careful. That looks okay. Right. Um, so I might do half and half again, just like the other the other two. I'm not sure which way to do that. I could do. Half and half back to front. Hmm. Oh, I did paint the bottom in, in the end as well. Thought I might as well. Did it off camera though. Save time. I'll, I'll do half and half like the other ones. So you just go over the white bits really and then spray them up. Doesn't matter if you go on the black. In fact, you want to because it'll uh, it'll show up really brightly where there was white paint, and then it'll blend into the darkness. As long as you don't put too much on, with where the black is.
Oh, that's what I'll show you how I do GW paints. With them being in a pot and not in a nice dropper pot. So I've got my flow improver ready and waiting. I'll just get an old crabby brush. And then I just take some. And plop it in and mix it round. Now this, especially the GW paints tend to be very thick because they're designed for uh, use with a brush or an airbrush, so you don't need much of it. If you, can, if you don't use flow improver, it clogs a lot. So I've found out many times. Well, that might be a bit too thick, I don't know. Well, it looks okay. Well, that's okay, I'll go with that. Now let's just stop. Banging down some blue. Just bring it around so you can see. I think that's a really nice colour. Thousand Suns blue. It's another army I collect. Thousand Suns. Magnus did nothing wrong. Often dabble in the warp. Very subtle difference, there's not a lot in it, to be honest, with this blue, to the uh, Thousand Suns blue. I'll perhaps just do it on like the, well, just in random places, I don't want it all to be this colour. Just a little, a little more pale in spots, there, on that tip, and the underneath of that tip. Warlord purple, I love this paint. I mean, it says it's purple, but that's that's as pink as it comes, isn't it, really? But over the top of purple, it just looks fab. This is what makes my Dark Eldar army pop. Right, so I'll perhaps put some on the tip there. Sorry, I'm just shielding the blue side there from painting this this, this side of that little teeny wing. I have to get it purple all over and blue. All around there. There we go, so we've got nice variation. Right, this is uh, dried now. So, mostly dry anyway. So we'll go to, on to the next stage, so we need to uh, go back with white now, so we'll get some white ready. Right, so now all we've got to do now is, I'll grab this one, carefully go over the, uh, that side's probably better to show you, go over the colours, both sides, and just pick out areas that do like little white blobs so it's like a really concentrated area of stars and then do little little like much thinner lines coming off from them and following these little forks of colour we've got 
I've done them a little thicker on this one, but it's fine. It should look all right afterwards. I think I did these a bit too thin, to be honest. And then, uh, yeah, so just go along and do, every now and then, do a little, a little blob, and then do some very faint lines, and just go along all of it, and it just transforms it into a nebula. So, let's go. Start with the blue side. So the bits where it's quite chunky, I usually end up putting the, uh, like one of the more blobs like there. I'll probably start with a blob, and then I'll just carefully draw a little line. And go along most of it. Like so. And come away from that. Intermittently, just putting little, little more blobby bits. So that kind of thing. I don't know well you can see that. That looks something like now, I would say. Look at the difference it makes when you put the white on, it really starts coming together. So as long as I'm careful, I'll flip it over. Oops. Start doing the. Well, I'll, I'll cut for now and then I'll do the bottom. Oh, before I do that, I can, while well, I've still got some white paint in, I can do the eclipse now because I shouldn't have to go over that area with any other colours now. So. Um, so which way do we want the 
as I'm looking at it, you've got to decide where you want the like the sun boosting over the top at that kind of thing effect. So maybe there. Hmm. Not sure. I might do it there. What does he do with the other ones? I always did it towards the body. So I might do the same. So just get the uh, where well you can see the circle there, pick a place and just start spraying on it around the edge. And then concentrate it more at one end. Like so. And then do it to a little bit around it. Around all the edge. A bit more faint down the bottom though. Fairly, very light on the trigger. So we've got some around it now, all the way around, just pure white, and then a concentrated amount at the top. And then when I peel, when that's dried, I can peel it off, but I won't do it till the end. One near the end, and that will look like like that. Happy days. Right, I'm, uh, I'm just going to go back in with a, a little bit of black before I move on. Um, I'm not quite happy with the amount of colour I've got on it compared to how I did my old ones. There's a lot more black in between, so I'm just going to go back in where there should be more more shade. You know, to make it a bit more a bit more contrast to it. So I'm going to get some black in. I'm really carefully going to very gently rock back the trigger and start filling in some of these areas that just hasn't got enough contrast for me so I'm just going to very gently start to put some black in those spaces. had to do this when I uh, painted my jet bikes because they're so small to do a little uh, nebula design on it uh, it ends up being pretty much covered in uh, purple and blue and uh, to make it pop I had to put some black back in Look at the difference that's made already. Looks much better. There we go. Right, for the next bit, it's uh, time to put down some planets. So, I go back to my uh, sticky back plastic, and the bit that I cut out the moon, uh, sorry, the eclipse uh, part for, just the, the outer part will, make, will do for planets. Like that. That's the kind of thing you're looking for. So I've, I've not used that one. I've done a couple of extra big, uh, slightly bigger ones. I was going to do some a little bit bigger than that for a, a planet. I was thinking on this one. So I've done one already. So it goes in across there like that on that wing. And then this one is ready for the one. All I've done is cut it out, cut out. A square around it, and I've just stuck it to my table a couple of times just to take some of the tack off the back because uh, it's it fetches my it's fetched my paint off a few times in the past. So we don't want that. It may happen again. I'll, I'll you have to just just touch up and repair if it does do that, but uh, I'm hoping it won't. So let's just find a good spot for this. Hmm. I was thinking to more towards the tip of the wing with the one being more central. Um, probably about there. Go with that. Just stick it down. Careful. No, 
that will do. Oh, I'm struggling to stick. Okie dokie. Alright, so what we need first is to paint them white. Same old routine. Alright, so we just start to uh, slapping down some white really. Okay, that's uh, dry now. So, time to paint them. So what I do is pick a, a couple, maybe three colours. Complementary colours usually, or things that look what you associate with planets. I, I, um, for most of mine, I've tended, tended to do one that's a bit of an earthy colour, like brown and, brown and green, maybe blue. And then um, on some of them I've done like a more like like I don't know gas giants style colour and ones with like a sun colour where it's red and yellow. So I might do this one red and yellow and this one like an earthy brownie one. So I don't have many decent browns in dropper bottles, so I'm gonna use Driad Bark for by Games Workshop. So what you have to do is get it quite wet the paint and um, so plenty of flow flow improver in there is what I'm saying and then either you can either I usually put a whole coat of maybe brown down and then a good chunk of it blue and maybe a good chunk of it green or something like that and then just blow it all around with just the air of my airbrush when it's all wet and hopefully you get some nice patterns where it starts to mix and it looks a bit like atmosphere doesn't always work how you want it at this stage, but there you go. I'll just keep going until I get what I want. So, flow improve it. Bit of dread bark. Not a lot because I want it to uh, quite wet, like I said. Another colour, maybe dragon stars with green. Okay, wall boss green. I'll get that open and ready. And then a blue. Go for sky blue. brown down, say all over it. Nice and wet. That's the most difficult thing to get right when you're doing this. With the viscosity of the paint so it runs just nice but it doesn't do that. Let's see what we can do. May not work. And some blue. I'm just going to blow it around, just using the air.
So I've already got some streaky effects. That's uh, dry enough to put uh, some, like a highlight and a shade. So you put, um, you get some white spray, and you spray one end of the planet where the like where the masking is, and just uh, I'll probably just at the top there, where, uh, where my finger is. Spray white around there, and then so it gets more intense as you get up to here. And then the same with black, more intense down here, and then fading into just that that part there. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. And then once you take the masking tape off, it should look like a planet. Right, so I'm gonna go up the top there. So this will be the part of the planet that's uh, in daylight. Drying it now. Okay. So then we'll just the opposite end spray some dark. Make it look like this is the side of the planet that's heading into night time. There we go. Right, Lovely jubbly. And then we just take the masking tape off and see what we've got. Hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't ran under the tape too much. If you use masking tape, oh it's a nightmare, it gets, it gets right under and just goes all over your paint job. But this stuff, fingers crossed, so far has been much better. Hopefully it doesn't rip on my previous paint job off. Coke. Yeah, so that's because I had to make it, the paint so wet, so it has dripped down here. But I'll just have to repair that. I'll just, uh, I'll probably just spray that bit black and just redo that part. No problem. Well, yeah, you get the idea. See there, we have a planet all of a sudden. Right, I've done the other planet now. I, I wish I'd vid videoed this one to be honest, because it went much better. But uh, there we go. That one mixed much better look. I think it's probably because they were both Vallejo air paints and they're just much thinner so these just stayed liquid for longer for mixing together and then the Eclipse can be finished now so carefully peel the masking disc off Easier said than done. There you go, it's left a lot of sticky. I think it's because of how, how warm it is. It's unusually warm in my room. But yeah, you can see how it's left a perfect black disc. And then the part that I said I was going to do where the sun's bursting over, you just get some of your white paint. And give it a good going over in that area. There we go. And clips. Right, ready to move on to the next part. I should just say I've, uh, I've finished neating, neating it up after the, uh, the paint from the planets ran. I got most of it off with uh, just a brush and some. Uh, airbrush cleaner and just brushed it away and it came away and then dabbed it off with some paper towel and I've just sprayed back in with black and neatened up that part there. So it looks pretty cool now. Okay, so for the next part it's probably the most tedious 
and that's putting the stars on. Um, on my first models, I I used a toothbrush and just loaded it up with white paint and just flicked it with my finger, and it spatters on. But it's very, very like lots and lots of little dots. They do look random and starry, but I don't know. There's something about it that doesn't look quite right for me. So on my more later models, I've started putting them on by hand. I think I don't, I don't suppose you can see very well, but uh, I think it just looks a bit better, to be honest. But it's just a bit more, well, a lot more painstaking. But I think it's worth it. All right, so for that, I just get the my smallest brush, which is a, I think this is a zero brush from Windsor and Newton Series Seven. I'm just get some white paint for this. I'm using white scar. A little brush and start dabbing stars on. So I found that leaving a little bit of space in between and then doing lots of tight little clusters seems to have, uh, I'd say, the most desired effect. And every now and then I do a little, a little cross. It's like a little, uh, like a brighter start like that. Just keep dabbing. Just do like little constellations all around the place. Some in triangle shapes and some like the. Uh, the plow and things like that. Whatever you want, really. And I'll go on to the coloured parts as well. And I tend to, when it gets a bit more white or a bit more coloured, I tend to do a lot more little stars, like it's uh, more concentrated around that area. Right, I've done the uh, stars, dotted them as randomly as I can. Oh, well, you can see that just all over. Makes a big difference. Really brings it together, the galaxy effect. So I think I'll do, while well, the airbrush is still out, I'll do the effect on the, the windscreen canopy. So for that, I just use another piece of, well, the the bit that I cut the eclipse part out of the, the surrounding part to mask off and just about like that kind of thing so you look at a done one so you want to mask off the black part and go up about I don't know about how far is that about just about halfway really up there we go like that and then we'll spray that with the light grey colour Try and dry that. A bit more. Okay. And then I'll spray, just like on the planets, one half of it. A little bit of white and then the other side a little bit of dark just to add like a light side and a dark side to it even though you can't see much of it it still makes, makes it look a bit better 
So I'll spray the white towards the bottom. Like that, I don't need much. Tiniest little bit. That'll do. And then do the reverse, spray some very fine layer of black just towards the top area. Not a lot. There we go. Some little spots on it, like as if it's um, got little craters on or something. So some little fine detail. I don't think that's gonna be enough. Get a bit more black paint. You can either get your finger or get an old model or something and just get the stand off. Look it at it. I'll just add some little tiny blobs. There we go, and we can take that off carefully. reflection of a moon in the windscreen so what I'll do with is uh, let that dry and then I'll glue it onto the model and then what I'll do is paint the windscreens back in black not the windscreen sorry the, the like the, the struts on the windscreen paint them back into black so it's black and then later on I will uh, put a what is it a gloss varnish on the on the window panes just to make it look like it's glass and that's it for that Right, so I've uh, glued the canopy on now, as you can see, and I've just painted the struts around it in black, like I said, and then just a few little stars on, and that's it really. I'll just, uh, I'm just going to give it a coat of uh, gloss varnish now to make it look like a more like a window, more like a reflection kind of thing going on. So I've just got some gloss varnish. This is Vallejo, but you can use the Games Workshop one or whichever with a medium sized brush. And then just uh, carefully paint the window panes. There we go, it just gives it a nice shine. I like the look of that. Right, that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. All the uh, galaxy effect is done and the uh, planet in the windscreen. And I'll do, I'll perhaps do a couple of smaller videos for just a few of the other things that I do on it, like uh, the gemstones and the thrusters. So they look like they've been like that kind of thing like heat distress so yeah stay tuned and thanks for watching and there we go all done that's how I achieved the galaxy effect on my Eldar vehicles now you can try this with any colors really you don't have to do the ones I've done purple and blue you could do orange and greens and all kinds of colors and, uh, give it a whirl hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did, give it a like and a subscribe and share it with your friends and I hope to do more in the future. Thanks very much for watching.